Yes. Welcome to oh, the okay. two amigos. Yes, we are back. And yes, I cut off Carter again. Yeah. Keep going. Do the intro. Finish the intro. Uh, that's the intro, man. We're back. <laughs> okay. Yeah. After the slag of a bye week, we are back. And we're going to do one of those rapid fire shows because we're going into one of those weeks, Jorge, where we're again playing a team who's worse than us and not very good and won't prove that we're a good team. I disagree with that statement. Oh, we you put, do. Okay. Like, we put 70 on the Broncos. I mean, just with a general feeling behind that statement. I think, you know, That's beating, any, beating anyone in the NFL is hard. You know, we put 70 on the Broncos and then they go to Buffalo and beat the Bills. It, um, yeah. You know, it's, it's not easy to win in, the, in this league. Yeah, that's fair to say. And also, I mean, off of that question, what the fuck's wrong with the Bills? Do you know what's wrong with the Bills? What's going on? I mean, first of all, they play in Buffalo. They do. <laughs> And I will not apologize for that statement. Um, I, I think it's just a general disconnect throughout the organization. I think, you know, we saw symptoms of that before the season began. Um, you know, their their defensive coordinator, you know, took a sabbatical. Uh, you know, they lost their offensive coordinator last year, Brian Dable. The offense has just looked, you know, disconnected. Obviously, Stefan and and Allen over there are not on the same page. Yep. Um, they lost a bunch of players on defense, which was really carrying that team. You know, Matt Milano is a huge loss for them. Uh, for much for for as much as we hate the player, you know, we have to feel for the guy, and he's a fantastic linebacker. I mean, if he was on our team, we would love him. He's the kind of guy that oh, you yeah. love on your team, and you hate him on any other team. Yeah. Um, and just I think the the injuries on on defense have definitely reached a breaking point for that team. Okay, so here's my question, I, and maybe you are more of a football head than I, and could answer this question. When's the last time? I mean, how far have a team gone? after they fired their offensive coordinator in season, what's the furthest you think a team has ever gone? I don't think they've gotten very far, right? I mean, anytime you, you fire coaches mid season, it's just a symptom of something not going well in your organization. Yeah. Like a cancer or something. I just don't, there's no way uh, you, you can almost count the bills out in my opinion from winning a Super Bowl this year. I mean, I think I I agree, and I think you know I, I saw a meme yesterday, which was uh, they, it was basically a funeral at the Bills Stadium, and they were, uh, you know, it's a funeral for the Bills Super Bowl window, oh. uh, which was <laughs> freaking hilarious, man. I honestly uh, think you're, they're right, though. The window does feel like it was oh, they, it was like last year, the last two years, and they yeah. they fucking missed it. It feels like yeah. it. Yeah, I I agree. I, I agree with that, and. You know, I mean, as as good as Josh Allen is, he's not good enough to make up for all the interceptions he's throwing and all the turnovers he's causing. Um, I know. And I, I just, you know, it, it just kind of sucks uh, for from a Dolphins standpoint. I'm going to tell you why because we could never beat them at their, you know, their peak. Top at their peak. Yeah, that sucks. No, yeah. Now, if we ever beat them, like let's say we beat them in Miami this year by a lot, it really just doesn't feel that big of like yeah. that big of a deal. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Josh Allen was our daddy during the time that they were kind of like a one game away yeah. from the Super Bowl every year type team. Yeah. And now that they are kind of that windows up, now we can beat them. It just won't feel good. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, they own those for that for that peak and and you know, we were their bitches. Yep. There you go. Yeah. And here here's the here's the fun part though. We will continue to be uh the, the Patriots will continue to be our bitch for the foreseeable yeah. future. So yeah. that's beautiful as well. The 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 locker room's giving up on McCorkle. Bill Belichick might get fired. This is going to be a re- full rebuild coming up. Yeah, and by the way, I, you know, now that we talked, you know, we, we were the Bills bitches. You know, uh, the Pats are ours. You know, I think the Jets bitchiness is still up in the air, right? We've got that two is. games coming up this year, and I think if we beat them, you know, they are essentially our bitches. Yeah. If we we split the series, you know, then no one's no one's bitch. Yep. <laughs> if they beat us somehow for, for both games, then uh, you know. Robert Talley's her daddy. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm very confused about the Jets as well because some weeks they look like so formidable. It's impossible to score on them. And then who did they just lose to? Uh, I'm blanking. They just lost. Yeah, there was an awful, awful game. It was an I awful game. No, I watched the whole thing. I have thing. no idea who it was. Uh, Jets, let me give me two seconds. Count was, you five and I'll tell you. Yeah, I don't know why we both don't know this. It's like maybe the Mandela effect. But it's yeah, it's uh, the Raiders actually. <laughs> the Ra- oh, okay, okay. It, they, yeah, yeah. Honestly, the Raiders aren't awful, awful, but they are definitely like they had their backup quarterback in uh, because Jimmy got benched during that game. Yeah. Um. 
they both just look really, really bad. Um, so here's the thing with the Jets. I mean, they have a top three defense in the top league, three, right? I mean, they're fantastic on defense, absolutely right. stunning. The one thing that I think can harm their defense is Robert Saleh's stubbornness to stick with Zach Wilson. And if Zach Wilson doesn't pull games for that defense, then that defense is just going to quit on Saleh. Yeah. Well, here's the question, though. Remember last year when they had Matt White to go to, right? Yeah. Anytime Zach Wilson started to fuck up, you know, maybe it's interesting. Where would they be at record wise if Matt White could step in? For I mean, Zach I think Wilson that's, that's a very good question. And, you know, you see so many, you know, quarterbacks. I mean, Gardner Minshew would be an upgrade over Zach Wilson. Right? Oh, yeah. Um, I think if they had, you know, even, you know, adequate quarterback play, adequate quarterback play, mm -hmm. they would be, you know, they would have a winning record right now. They could be like seven and two, honestly. Yeah, they, 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 they were could close be against with the, us. Yeah. the Chiefs. They were close against the Raiders. They were close against. Um, I, I'm I'm spacing on a couple other ones, but really, they're just a couple of plays away already from being seven two. Yeah, I mean the, the the teams. I mean they beat the Eagles, right? The yep. the Chiefs beat them by three. Um, the the Raiders beat them by four. Then you've got you know I mean the Cowboys trashed them. They put thirty on them. Yeah. Um, the Chargers trashed them as well. And you know, the uh, scary you know, part about this is it's that it's a championship defense yeah. and Rogers keeps teasing us about coming back. Yep. Yeah, that's like, you know, that's, that's like you teasing me with your nudes every time we do this show. <laughs> it, that, it's never going to happen, man. That's true. I do do that. Um, but you know, I, you know, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> but th the point here is, I like if Rogers like and a lot of people are thinking he says mid December now that's what he's saying and that's insane but, that but he didn't, but come didn't back he, from but that. didn't he pull, you know didn't he uh, recant that statement saying that's not what I said you know oh maybe I don't know I haven't seen the update yeah my, my understanding is that apparently he never he's saying that he never said that that the reporter asked him to talk to his to his doctor and that's the conversation he had with her um, and that he's never promised he's going to be back in December. Okay, well, if he got back in December, that's inhuman. Like, it's not yeah. a human being that can do that Achilles surgery and be back in less than like a year. I feel like, yeah. Uh, so, you Achilles injuries are so bad usually that they that someone who you consider like one of the best players in in the NFL or the NBA usually like shortens their career by like three years because it's such a bad injury. And yeah, I, I it would be insane to me to say that he could be back in December, and a lot that's what they were flirting with and saying, oh, he'll be back versus Miami as his first game. How poetic, and we'd get fucked by Rogers again. Uh, I don't think it's gonna happen. I mean, honestly, I don't think him coming back is a real possibility. First of all, and second, I like her defense right now, Carter. I'm I'm very high on her defense. I am I am as well after watching that Chiefs game. So here I want to talk a touch on Chiefs Chiefs game. I know it was a while ago. I know we haven't talked, but we really haven't talked. We didn't have a bye week show. Here's what I want to ask you because I want to talk philosophically. I have three philosophical questions, and then okay. we'll predict the Raiders game, and then we'll be out of here. The first philosophical question I have for you is: Did it, if at all, lower your confidence in Tua that last possession against the Chiefs? What did it What did it do for you? Look, I think there is a conceptual issue with the Dolphins' offense, the way it's built. Sure. It relies so much on timing that crowd noise can really be disruptive to it. Yeah. Um, That's fair. And I think, you know, having backup after backup after backup at the offensive line is just starting to take a toll on this team. Um, and the timing was just off. Um, I, I, I don't blame Tua for the bad snap. I mean, corner basically threw a you know a fastball to a right hander, and two is a lefty for starters. Right. Um, I think the miscommunication with with Cedric was not Tua's fault. It also wasn't Cedric's fault. It was just a miscommunication. That's it. You know, Tua had the cut read. Cedric didn't see it. Cedric kept running. You know, if if Cedric stops, you know, it's a first down. He breaks the tackle. It's a score. If Tua doesn't throw the hot read, it's a score. Um, it's just one of those things that happen. I, I, I still believe Tua is a top, you know, top seven quarterback in the league right now. Um, and it was just a bad drive, man. It was just, I think the play calling got a bit away from McDaniel getting away from the run. I mean, they had a timeout. They were running well. They ran 44 yards in two plays. He should have kept running. That's my, my take, or at least go with a play action, not just, you know, a regular, a traditional pass. Um, 
So, so I think, you know, it, it, no, it, to answer your question, I still believe in Tua. Um, I think he's still the guy to lead us to, to a Lombardi. And that's a super good point that I never really thought of is the timing of the offense getting thrown off by the the sound, uh, the, the noise, right? The problems with the noise. The The issue with that concept is every time we play someone uh, like the Philadelphia, it's always going to be that loud. Uh, in yeah. Kansas City, it's always going to be that loud. Again, in these primetime slots, it's always going to be that loud. And then going into the playoffs, that's the same rules. But what, yeah. what I will say, though, is I agree with you on most of this, but I disagree on the uh, in one specific area. Those uh-huh. two plays back to back were the play, you know, regardless of like, oh, well, it was a miscommunication. Um, and whoa, it was like kind of a bad snap. I'll tell you this, though, just like the guys that are great, they make that happen. Those two plays back to back. I'm not saying that I've lost a ton of confidence in Tua, but like though that those plays back to back were ugly. They were ugly. I was in Kansas City watching this game with like at a Kansas City bar with hundreds of Kansas City fans around me. And he had the opportunity. The Chiefs were begging us to beat them. They were begging us. They were not. They're not a better team than we are. And, uh, you know, Tua, you know, underthrows that ball. Uh, Tua misses that snap. And it just felt like he cowered in that situation. I just didn't feel great about it. Look, I, I didn't feel great about it either. I just think, you know, it, it was, I think Tua did the right read. I mean, Tua, there's nothing any white receiver, any quarterback can do when the when the white receiver just doesn't make the same read. You know, that's a hot read. It's a blitz. It's coming in. Second of all, if Tua catches that snap, did you see the safety coming in completely unblocked? He had to get that ball out quick, and he's good at that. I, I get it. I get, I just don't think you know he was going to be able to get it away anyways. I mean, I think... I, I Honestly, the snap's on Connor, and don't get me started on Connor this year because I will you know shit on him for a whole show if I need to. No, I know, I know. But um, that wasn't Connor's fault. <laughs> I think it was, man. I, I honestly think it was. I oh, I I'll do this. I'll do split blame, but I will not go further than that. I think it's a right. split blame. 50-50, fine. 50-50. Okay? Like you want that on the money in that in that opportunity. I agree. You yeah. don't want the ball outside, but catch the fucking snap. All and right. Also, I'm going to I'm going to throw you I'm going to give you like yeah. 10, 10 concepts, all right? Which sure. is, you know, similar to what a quarterback has to do in that situation, okay? And yeah. I want you to remember this 10 concepts in 20 seconds, okay? Okay. So we're going to start with the color blue. We're going to go with a dog giraffe all right hot read left blitz on the right okay Tua, uh tyreek's gonna gonna throw a post all right i like donuts okay i like blue cars uh las vegas gp is what this one and now Carter, tell me the first color i told you i don't know probably all blue. Right, so yeah but this is like <laughs> everything that's going on through a quarterback's head at yeah. that moment so as a center the least thing you can do is just make one thing easy for him man don't throw a fucking fastball, you know, 12 inches to his right when he's thinking about everything he has to do with a clock running down in a position to score, make it as easy on him. That's your job as a fucking center. I agree. You should, he should have made it easier on him, but then when it wasn't easy on him, I'm just saying like big players make big plays when the pressure's on. Right. So I just think like in basketball, when you're, uh, when you're double covered or whatever it is in the last seconds of a, of a basketball game, it's like, oh man, he didn't, uh, he didn't make the buzzer beater because he was double covered. You should have, you should have helped him out and screen for him. It's like, no, the best player has the ball in his hands at the last seconds and they make plays. But he didn't get it. He didn't get the ball in his hands because it was a bad snap. Because he was a bad snap. The rules of the, the, of the football are always this. If it hits your hands, you should catch it. And you and anyone who's ever played this sport know that's fucking ridiculous rule because sometimes it will hit the tip of your fingers and you're outstretched out wide and it touches your finger because you're making an effort and there's no way you catch that. So well, I'm I'm sorry I'm not blaming two on this one, man. Well, in another universe, I'll say this, and this is what hurts the most because I was in the heart of I was literally in Kansas City at the biggest Kansas City pl- like the place that everyone watches it, right yeah. on a huge screen. And after he drops that snap, I had nine Kansas City fans screaming in my ear, F you, um, leave town. And all Tua had to do was catch that snap and throw a, a little slant. He's been working on that for nine years with Waddle. And that's in a different universe. It's a touchdown and we go to OT. 
Yeah. Uh, and it was probably one of the biggest, um, I'll tell you this, the biggest disappointments as a Dolphin fan I've ever had. I've ever had. All right. Um, do you think you're taking out your, you know, that frustration from those guys yelling at you and, you know, on tour a bit unfairly here? I don't know. And I'm not going to admit <laughs> either way. Okay. <laughs> um, but what I will say is, okay, that's the first question. The second philosophical question is this, and it's going further. Uh, you know, we have, we got our hard knocks going on now in season hard knocks. We, which I think the first episode's dropping next week. Uh, and we're going into the later part of the season. Here's my question to you. Are we a Super Bowl team, Jorge? Okay. And here's the caveat. Even without the first round bye, you could probably say goodbye to the first round bye. Are you saying this is a Super Bowl team, a still contender? You've said this before earlier in the season. Do you still believe it? I very much still believe it. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Outside of that Bills game, where I think it was more mental than anything else, the Dolphins have been in every game they've played. It's true. They And you know, playing away from home, whether it's in Germany or in Kansas City or Philadelphia, it's not easy in this league. I think this team at home is close to invincible. It's true, but we won't have, um, we won't have home field advantage through the playoffs. You don't see you, you don't think the, the Chiefs will lose another game? I the mean, the Chiefs, Chiefs are very least, vulnerable. Chiefs need the to lose Chiefs two. Are, yeah, but they have a very tough schedule going forward, and they are a very vulnerable team. So I, I wouldn't discount the possibility of us having a first round, you know, bye. That being said, I think this team is really growing up in front of us. I think if this team, you know, gets one game at home. And they they win that divisional round, wild card, whatever the fuck it is, and then they go away from home. I think they are gonna make it very tough on anyone they play. I think there are very few defenses in the AFC that can do what the the Eagles do. Um, you know the Bills can no longer do it. The Chiefs, I mean, I think we learn how to play them. Yep. I I don't outside of Cleveland, there's no another defense that I fear outside of the Jets which I don't think are making the playoffs, even though I think they're going to be pretty damn close to it. So yes, I think this team is a true contender to win the AFC championship. The Super Bowl is what I said, though. Super Bowl? Yeah, yeah. but if, if you win the AFC championship, then you're in the Super Bowl. And the Super Bowl, it's, you know, it's a toss-up. You know, it's, it's gonna be there's, the so many, there's so many factors going on, and uh, I think this team can beat anyone. Yep, it's going to be the up. Eagles, though. It's going to be the Eagles. Uh, All right, Carter, if, if you follow Carter's advice, he strongly thinks... The Eagles are making the Super Bowl. In case that wasn't clear by the yeah, five seconds, okay. Eagles. You've got to admit, if it's not the Eagles, who? Right? I mean, the like, 49ers, man. Oh, the 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 49ers who lost three teams, the shitty shitty opponents, three games yeah. in a row. Yeah. I mean, gosh, uh, Debo Samuel doesn't play. Uh, like one player is out, and they they just they just crumble. I mean, I I just I don't know if they have the legs. Here's what I will say. On New York Times, that like playoff calculator, I use it all the time because I love playing with playoff scenarios. And I have been very vocal on this show about how important the first round buy is. Because yeah, you're right. We're invincible at home. We're like amazing, like 15 and one in the next last two years. I don't know what it is, but we are amazing at home. In order to make it through that, I think it's just going to be you're meeting the Chiefs in the AFC Championship. And it's going to either be in it's either going to be an arrowhead or it's going to be in hard rock. So a huge part of this is winning out, right? Yeah. So it, if we won out completely, this calculator still has, has us all at 76% chance of getting that by. So really like we'd have no margin for error anymore. We have to beat. And the last three games is really what you aim at here. So you have the Cowboys, the at, yeah. at Baltimore, right? And then you have the Bills. All three of those games are not going to be cakewalks. I mean, where do you think we go in that stretch? I think we're definitely beating the Bills. I think we're definitely beating the Cowboys. I it's think at the, Baltimore. I don't give a shit, man. We're winning out. You think we're winning out? We've got, you know, we've got players coming back from injury. I don't yeah. think people understand how much the absence of Crackcraft really hurt this team. He's mm -hmm. our best blocking wide receiver. He's Tua's sure. favorite target in the red zone. He's a great guy in the locker room. Um, uh -huh. I don't think people understand how how much his absence hurt this team. You know, Connor Williams, for whatever the fuck he's snapping the ball, is back. Um, you know, Robert Hunt's gonna be back next week. He's not playing this week, 
don't get your hopes up. Isaiah Wynn is going to be back for that stretch. Right. You know, Achan is back. Jalen mm-hmm. Wall is finally getting healthy. You know, we finally have a solid defense because, you know, this defense looks completely different with Jalen Ramsey on the field. Right. Um. So, yeah, Carter, I'm, I'm actually very confident we're winning out. I I mean, it's you're always Mr. Optimism. Uh, here's what I will say. I, I am very, very much in the camp of that Chiefs game. Um, uh, we win that Chiefs game. We have we just lo- we would have locked up the first round by. We would have locked it up. Yeah. And now we are scrambling, and we we don't have you know our fate is is sealed by the Chiefs starting to suck. So we need the Bills to beat the Chiefs coming up. We need the Eagles to beat the Chiefs coming up. If they can, if both those team win. We have a possibility of winning this uh, one seed. Here's my last question to you. And this is more of a, phil- like I said, we're doing a philosophical show. So uh, just get used to it. But the Yes, phil- Professor the- Carter. You- Thank you. I appreciate it. I- here's my question. And-, and this is every year, there are different circumstances. There's different quarterbacks playing. There's different injuries. Uh, we have a lot better statistics offensively this season. But here's my question to you. Last year through nine games, what was our record? I have no idea. Six and three. Okay. This year we are six and three. Okay. And Tua, after we became six and three, uh, he went zero and four uh, over the stretch of the 49ers game. Uh, I think it was that was the start of like, yeah, the Chargers game, and this was this huge skid that uh, happened. Right yeah. after they went six and three, what makes this year different? What We're makes not, it different? I think it's very simple. We're not playing the 49ers or the Chargers in back to back West Coast games for it's starters. True. That's tough. The team too is healthy. Um, the team is much more mature. I mean, what's our con there going forward? Right, we've got Raiders at home, Jets, at, then we've got the Jets at, at New York, New York game, yeah, Black Friday. Then at it's commanders. W- the commanders at home, correct? On the road, it's on the road again. Yeah, it's on the road, and then we have like a four-game home stretch. Okay, so I think you know the commanders or the Jets. I mean, I'll start the Jets defense. Which look, the Jets defense is going to be a very very tough customer, mm-hmm. but I think our defense, their offense, is way worse than our offense. Yes. I think so. So I think our defense is going to score off them. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, I also think it's going to be a personal game ju- for for uh, McDaniel, just like the Chargers game was, where he wants to beat Sally, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, last year, what was it? We went one and one with him, correct? Yeah. I think he wants to sweep them this year. So yeah, we've got the Vegas at home, Jets at, well, away, Washington away, and then it's the Titans at home, the Jets at home, Dallas at home. Yeah. And uh, okay, so those five in a row, we sh- I, honestly, you look at the Jets games, and in my opinion, you just say you split because it's just, it's the AFC East, and you don't yeah. usually sweep the opponent. So just yeah. say you split. I I'm think coming okay out of that. this is one and or four and one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then you come into those last three games, and that's where we could totally start to skid. Uh, Cowboys, Ravens, Bills is fucking hard. And. That we have that stretch of hard games, like the Cowboys could injure our an entire uh, offense before we head into Baltimore. You know, I, I worry about getting beaten up by like uh, Mika Parsons and the boys. Right? Um, they have a very tough defense, and they do. you know that they have a very tough defense. It's going to be a tough matchup for sure. Um, but you know, Carter, I don't think you know we we still have this mentality about being you know the same old Dolphins, and they're going to beat up on us, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to run them tired man i mean we have a fucking you know sprint team out there at wide receiver um so i think other teams have to be worried about the effect of playing us more so than the effect of us playing them i would love to have confidence in that but i really do need to beat that good opponent like i don't want to be everyone else but we 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 really haven't i mean like every time we play those big games that we've lost them so honestly that's the only thing that can change my mind on this team we need to be that big one. You beat the Cowboys. You beat the Ravens. One of those two wins will give me confidence going into the playoffs. All right. Um, honestly, I think we're winning. I think we're winning. And But I will say, say this. I would be totally fine 
for us to have that big win happen in the playoffs and not beforehand. Yeah, but like we're not going to have any we're not going to have the first round by for sure unless we we win out basically. <laughs> I think this season has been particularly uneven, so I I wouldn't put it past the Chiefs to lose three more games before the season's over. That'd be I, that'd be beautiful. The Ravens just had a huge injury with Marlon Humphrey. Yeah, you cannot true. underestimate the impact that that absence will have on them. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, Dallas is you know they forget how to play football in December down there. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, so yeah, man, I, I don't know. I, I'm confident. I'm optimistic. You know, I think this is going to be a great year for the Dolphins. And we get to have it all televised by the Hard Knocks team. Uh, so it better be. So it better be. Here's the last thing I'll say. Uh, Raiders Dolphins prediction going into week 11 here. We should boat race them. It should not be close. We're facing a backup quarterback and they are bad. Uh, the only thing really to worry about is Devonte Adams on this team. Um, and well, Crosby. Josh Jacobs and Max Crosby. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's three, honestly, three good players on the entire team. So yeah. good luck. Um, I, I'm going to go with a 45 to 17 score. We should, we should crush them. All right. I'm going to go with 56 to nine. Okay. <laughs> there, thank you. We're at home and we have everyone back. Literally yes. everyone on this roster is back. So that's what I'm going to go with as well. Uh, anything else for the way out, Jorge? Nothing, man. I've missed you. Glad to be back. We know this season has been uneven from your favorite hosts at the Two Amigos. Yep. But we will be better. We shall be better. And we will do better for you guys. I I love it. I love whatever that was. It's really, really hard. Really sweet. <laughs> You're a sweetheart. I will say that. <laughs> All right. We will. Well, I guess we'll see you next week after we beat the Raiders and prove to the NFL once again that we crush the worst teams in the league. I will see you next week. This is the two amigos. Uh, have a good have a good time. <laughs>